Rodokies and Dilip here back with another OBS tutorial and today we're going to be looking at all different hotkeys and different shortcuts that you can use inside of OBS. A ton of these I genuinely couldn't use OBS without like I just use them the second nature and they really like improve your your stream because you get things done quicker like it, honestly all around it'll help you out so if you practice using some of these it will honestly speed up every single step that you do to making your stream look great and just general navigation around OBS there are a couple of bonus tips in there as well so make sure you are staying tuned until the end let's get on with it all right boy rock for the stone much love let's go So we're going to start off with a nice simple ones to, to begin with. So let's jump into OBS. I've got two sources just here. I've got a media source, which is this video playing at the front. And we've got a green color source in the background. So uh, control C is copy and control V is paste. So you can see we've got two of the same source. So there are two different versions of paste. If I right click and you can see we've got paste reference, which is uh, set up to control V. And we've got paste duplicate. So reference is basically like a link of that source. So it's the exact same source. So if you put filters on it, then they will all carry across to whatever you've pasted. But if I paste a duplicate, that actually creates a different version of that source. So I can have different filters on that one to what I've got on this one because they act as two completely different sources. As you can see, the name is different. Certain sources like the media source, when they get copied, so if I do control C on that one and right click, I can't paste the duplicate. And that is just on certain sources that that can't happen, but you can always create a different media source. It's usually if, if they're linking to the same media or camera or something like that. So the other shortcut that I just wanted to mention is the delete key. So if I highlight any of these, just press the delete key and it'll ask us if we want to remove it that saves you having to right click going up and pressing remove as well so for this next one i'm just going to create a bunch of different random uh, sources just here so i'll do a text source that'll do and i'll add it in a browser source press ok just so we've got a couple of different ones just here one more and we'll do a uh we'll do a gradient source why not push the boat out here we go so we've got a bunch of different sources just here as you can see on this list but if i hold down control and press the down arrow you'll see because the gradient one is highlighted i can move it up and down the sources list as you're seeing just here in the the bottom left i can click on any of them so if i click on the text gdi press hold down control and press up and down I can move them up and down or if whilst I'm holding control I press the home key it goes to the top or press the N key it goes automatically to the bottom and you can obviously select different ones by just tapping up and down on its own so as you can see right now I'm just moving the cursor using just the up and down key hold down control I can start moving the media source down uh, moving it up and down to select another one I'll go to the color source hold down control press end uh, and that goes to the bottom so it's easy source management to move them up and down between layers another way obviously is clicking and dragging but sometimes I can get a little bit finicky if you know what you're doing with the keyboard you can easily just move them around dead simple like that it, it, it just allows me to have a little bit more precision so now we've got this source some other handy little tips that i've got is control d i'm all about the uh, the control d if you know what i mean uh control d actually centers it so any source if we press control d on it'll automatically center that saves you going right click then going down to transform center to screen you see how these things really help like with that sort of thing um and obviously when it comes to uh, fitting it to the screen we can do control f and that'll fit it to the screen so it's not stretched the screen it's actually keeping its um, resolution and, and its size intact so it is the correct size if i do control s though that actually stretches it to the screen so control f f for fill uh, control s s for stretch so fill and stretch uh, and that just allows you to easily just blow things up to the size of the screen. The only thing is when using those is when you go to this menu, which is control E to go to the transform menu, it actually changes the bounding box type, as you can see there. So that might make your sources go a little bit wonky if you're not used to how bounding boxes work. If you want to see a tutorial on that, let me know in the comments and I will definitely pull that up for you. Uh, one last one is control R and that will reset it back to as if you've just imported that image or that source into 
into it, it'll have the, the same uh, sizes and it'll be in the same position where it should be, depending on obviously w how you imported it as. So again, S for stretch, F for fill, uh, R for reset, and Control E to load up the transform menu like so. And obviously Control D to center. Right, so more kind of things that you can do with your sources. You'll probably see when you're moving it around, it'll start snapping in place. As you can see, if I go to this corner, it'll quickly snap into the corner. If you don't want that to happen, just hold down the control button and it'll stop any snapping at all. So as you can see, let go of control whilst I'm moving it around and it snaps to the corners and to the center and uh, the horizontal line and the, the vertical lines as well. Uh, hold down control, nothing will happen. So you can freely move it around. Another thing to do whilst you're on a source is if you hold down the Alt key, when in a corner or a side, you can actually crop the image. So you can tell it crops because it actually turns this green line. So you can see that your source has actually been cropped a little bit. And you do that by holding down Alt and clicking and dragging in any of these boxes. Another thing that you can do, which I really like, is nudging the source. So whilst the source is uh, selected, you can just press up and down arrows and it will just move it bit by bit so i'm just pressing the left arrow there it'll move it by one pixel each time the right arrow down arrow you can hold them down and it'll just move along that helps if you want to make them minor adjustments and speaking of minor adjustments if i hold down the space bar you should see this hand if you don't see the hand we can right click go to preview scaling and do a canvas size just here and then now we'll be able to zoom in and out by holding down the space bar. So holding space, we can use the scroll wheel to zoom right in. And then once we're really close, what we can do is then utilize that pixel movement to get it as perfect as we want things to be. So you're, there's no reason why your camera will not fit your overlay because you can literally go in and dial it to the pixel. So one last thing we can do is actually set whatever hotkeys we want so we can do that by going either to file and press settings or you can press settings in the bottom right hand corner and once this menu is open you can go down to hotkeys and you can see all these different things that we can set we can set things for start streaming do quick transitions stop streaming you've got recording pause recording you've got loads of different options that you can use here as you can see we can even do scene and source control as well so if you want to say the image that we've got on the screen at the moment if we want to show that i can do control one and we want to hide it i'm going to press control two and then press apply and once that's done if i press control one and control two to hide control one to show it and i can keep pressing them and i can do absolutely anything like i say there are so many things that you can do and set in here as well and if you check out my tutorial on the uh, hotkeys for filters then you can actually see that you can control filters with hotkeys as well i'll leave the link in the description down below oh and for you keen eyed viewers you probably see that i'm running obs 27 the release candidate and anything that i ever do uh, we can do Control z or Control shift and z to undo and redo as you can see just in the top just there if you want to learn more about that then i'll leave the video in the description down below undo and redo let's go if you guys think i've missed any hotkeys or you've got a favorite hotkey that really helps you out inside of obs then please let me know and i'll definitely cover it in a later video as well because uh, we're not perfect sometimes i miss stuff i do i miss stuff all right and hopefully this video has helped you out if it has drop a like subscribe all that jazz when we get to 10,000 subscribers i'm going to be doing a stream on youtube and helping you guys just taking questions if you need anything making a video of or anything like that then we're going to cover it so make sure you are subscribed for that because it's going to be awesome can't wait and obviously if you want to help me out consider becoming a channel member or even joining on patreon as well because then i can just create more content for you it takes a long time it takes up a lot of my time and yeah that's just how it is all right guys put your rock in the stone and i'll see you in the next one much love I just want to say a huge thanks to all my patrons that help make this content full time, make it free for you guys. And also a huge thanks to all my YouTube members. You, you guys are legends. Thank you so much for everything that you do for me and the community. Keep it up, guys.